Aloha and welcome to this bonus good shit. Today the Chili Viking and myself will be discussing learning to smuggle drugs and make hash oil. What it means to a family to grow chili together. Why Sweden is lucky he doesn't grow weed and how to make chili tinctures using both fire and ice. Well, Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Where are you from? Me? I'm British. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm a British interruption in an Eastern European family, is what I am. Yeah. Um, right. my, 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 I'm born in the United Kingdom by the sea, Brighton, south, south East England, about one hour from London, direct yeah. on the beach. I'm a beach boy. Uh, but yeah. my family are not. My family are Eastern Europeans. My mother's family are all from Eastern Europe. And my dad's family and my father himself from Georgia, Tbilisi, which is the capital. And that's yeah. why, if you take the edges off my moustache, I look a bit like Stalin, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> do. <laughs> it was fucking weird, to be honest with you. All my life I grew up looking strange and unusual and not like any of the people in England and then yeah. one day I went to Georgia to Tbilisi and I was fucking shocked when I got off the aeroplane to be surrounded by me yeah yeah everyone <laughs> looked like me you know well, are you are you a pure Swedish person you don't look very Swedish to me no um I'm half Icelandic and uh, half uh, I don't know of everything I guess I know my father's 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 father something he was a sailor and uh, nobody really knows where he came from so you know i'm like a i'm like a barn cat you know uh, i'm mixed up with everything i think so i know i have cousins in australia i have cousins all over the world so yeah, i'm not sure but mostly so icelandic it's it's us dogs with the mixed blood who have the strongest uh, strongest genes. That's what they say. Yeah, I think it? so. I think so. Yeah, we, we can have no, That's <laughs> fucking right, man. That's right. But if I'm correct, Iceland is actually not Scandinavia. If I remember correctly, Iceland is not technically part of Scandinavia. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah, I I, I think so. Um, it's more from the Arctic zone, something. So, yeah, I seem to remember a pub quiz many, many years ago where I failed on the question, is Iceland in Scandinavia? I said, yes. And then they said, eh, no, it's fucking uh, not. Okay. okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Britain. No, in Britain, pub quizzes are a bit like religion. Do you know what I mean? If you don't know yeah. all the words, they'll burn you as a witch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. This is brutal. You like it? Yeah, I like it. It's brutal. It's, do you know what it is? It's really simple. When I was a small boy, <clears throat> my, uh, I won't say who, but a family member of mine taught was an uh, old 1960s uh, weed guy growing, making hash, making hash oil and stuff like that. And in my early teenage years, he taught me lots and lots of irresponsible things. For yeah. example... He taught me, uh, you have to carry drugs across borders. Otherwise, what have you won when you cross the border? That was one of the pieces of wisdom he taught me when I was like 13 or something. Wasn't very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he also taught me how to make old school hash oil using alcohol, you see. Um, and um, the beauty of that was, now I'm an old fuck like I am. I don't have any need to make hash oil anymore. I'm a cannabis patient these days, so I'm boring. I get my cannabis from the from the chemist with a doctor's prescription, you know. Um, okay. But uh, but all I did was I realized when I looked at capsaicin chemistry that actually you can use the same traditional hash oil production methods to produce ca uh, ca uh, capsaicin tinctures. Right. And that's 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 where it came from. That was the birth of the Hindenburg extract. And um, I have to say, the idea was floating around for a long time. And I thought about it and I was like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? And I thought about it for a long time, maybe a year or so. And then one day I was with my lovely lady, Mrs. 420. 
And we were sitting down, throwing around creative names of things that made us think of hot stuff. And the word Hindenburg yeah. came up. <clears throat> and we just kicked that word around for a while until we said, fuck's sake, that's what it is. It's the extract. It's Hindenburg yeah. extract. Yeah. That's the way. And then, hey, presto, that was born. But I know you're also making tinctures and extracts, I've seen, yeah? Yeah. Um, I'm using uh, the only method um, I uh, currently know to take a uh, mason jar um, with uh, grounded chilies, super hot, maybe like two, 300 grams, um, and just use alcohol to, uh, and just let it sit, like shake it every day or so. For a couple of weeks. How long do you leave it? Two weeks. A couple of weeks. No, uh, you know your optimum extraction made. time. Up to optimum extraction time. Uh, so I've been told by a chef is forty days. Forty days. Fourteen a little days. shake. Forty four zero. And then you've got all the yeah, capsaicin yeah. out. You're going to get out of that run. Then you yeah. can pull it out. And if you want to, you could drop in a new run of, of chilies at that point and into the same stuff. And then you can get a higher capsaicin content in the alcohol. But 40 is, yeah. is apparently the optimum, kitchen optimum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I recently came across a, um, a uh, other uh, uh, chili head who had um, some other technique of extracting, like, um, oof, what did he use? With some more like lab stuff, you can make a tincture in like a day with the highest capsaicin uh, extract. Uh, it's like a sound wave. What were they using? I'm not sure. It's like a sound wave extraction of some sort. Um, I can send you a, a link. Is it a vacuum extraction? Yeah, it's something like that. You know, I'm not a technical guy, so but I can send you the link if you if you're interested. Sounds interesting <clears throat> to me. And then how do you treat your tincture then? When you're finished after your um, couple of weeks, what do you do with it next? Uh, I filtrate it and uh, I add um, to some bottles, I add a few flavor drops. Um, very, they're called flavor drops, you know, it's like hazelnut or blueberries, cherries, um, oranges. So I just put a drop in at a time and taste it. Till it tastes good and um yeah that's the whole process for now so, you know it, there's two there's two interesting methods you could apply to the end of it to yeah. um concentrate it even further yeah? yeah two things one i'm not sure about if it's legal or not for you to do and the other one i'm pretty sure is legal the one i'm not sure about the legality is if you take your tincture at the end of your period and then you put it in a water bath you know what that means a double boiler so i got yeah. one bowl with water and another bowl inside it and i'm heating up the bowl with the water yeah and the one inside it has the tincture and yeah. then you heat that off and then you can very do it in a fucking open place okay yeah. not yeah, inside yeah. <laughs> has to be outside far away from flames yeah um yeah. but uh if you do that when you heat that down then what you're left with is a concentration because the water evaporates quicker, uh, evaporates off, and then you're left with a, a stronger extract. That's one method. Yeah. But you have to remember that in some places it's illegal to do that because when you start heating alcohol, then you're distilling. And for that, you need a license in many countries. Yeah, so right. need to be careful about that. But the second way that you can do it does not involve heat. The second way you can do mm. it involves um, ice because water freezes at zero degrees and alcohol freezes at minus 17 degrees. Yeah. yeah. So when you take your extract, if you put it somewhere where you can control the temperature at zero degrees or between like say zero and minus five, and then you get ice forming on the top. That's just the water. That's not the alcohol. Then you collect the ice off the top of it. And you keep that going on until you get it down to whatever percentage you want, 50%, 20% volume. And then what you've done is you've taken all the capsaicin, you've concentrated it down into a tiny little block, and you've just done it with cold instead of with heat. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. 
In Germany, yeah. they make a special kind of beer called Eisbock in that way. And that beer is like starting normally at 17% alcohol and going up to, I think, 40% alcohol or something mm. like that. I could be wrong about that. But uh, that's what that stuff is, my dear Chili Viking. Yeah. But Amazing. no, I, I, uh, I love your grow setup. So tell me again, what are you growing right now? You've got two lovely <laughs> tents, a small and a big, yeah? Yeah, I got uh, I got uh, two amazing tents from Secret Jordan. Uh, the smaller one is a ninety by ninety centimeters, like three foot by three foot, and uh, I'm growing uh, the pockmark uh, black, purple black, and I have the golden reaper. I have the jays crossed with a pink tiger crossed with a reaper, the JPR if you know it, and. Yeah, what else do I got? <clears throat> yeah, the Primotali, the red. And in my big tent, I have the golden Primotalis growing, six of them. So, uh, and that's a big tent. That's a 150 by 150. It's like five feet by five feet. And it's like seven feet high or six, six five feet for, for the Americans. So, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, they they absolutely overrun the tent by now. I can't even close it. So, yeah, I tell I'm you what, Sweden is fun. Sweden is so so lucky that you're a chili head and not a weed grower. Otherwise, Sweden would have a massive drugs problem. That's for sure, right? Yeah. Man. That's absolutely oh, true. Yeah. There's one thing I wanted to just hit as a point before we get there, which yeah. is something which I don't think a lot of people know, which is the family involvement and benefit to the family of growing together now i know that you're big on this uh, and i just want you to tell the people about what it means to share this passion you know with your kids and with your wife yeah it's amazing um i come from i come from my family from a broken family alcoholism and uh, drug abuse and stuff like that and uh, i didn't grow up with my father so um i found this hobby of growing just like it just fell into my knee and uh, my at the time four-year-old daughter uh, showed interest in just growing and she always wanted to be with me always want to help me with whatever I do like and that's fine I love it so I started growing chilies and uh, she just came along and she has a little plants and uh, she takes care of them watering them and you know I'm I'm not letting her do the advanced stuff with nutrients or mixing and that stuff. She's only like almost six years old, but I can see, see it in her eyes that she enjoys it. And we, we create a bond, a connection between, between us, you know, at a deeper foundation somewhat. And, you know, I can, I can just talk with her for like hours. I can really go into it. Then you can just, I'm going to play now. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? We are. We have it. twenty pots to repot. Like, you know, <laughs> so, you know, you know our kids are, but it's amazing. I really love it. So I'm just love it. trying to love it. pass on something. You know, even the if thing, I don't the grow. That, or... The thing, the thing that I was, I was, and I hope anyone who's having a watch right now will be able to see, is that. Uh, chilies, you know, when you look out at the world, the chili head world, there's a lot of big guys with tattoos. I have tattoos myself, but you know, when they're, they're doing their chilies to show how tough they are and who can eat the most and so on, you know? But really, there's a wonderful, loving, intimate family and soft side to the chili world. It's all about sharing with the ones that you love and it's about yeah. creating bonds together, creating life together and making something beautiful together, you know? Um, Mr. Chili Viking, I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. And uh, I would say goodbye for now. All of you out there in television land, this is not the last time you will be seeing myself and my f dear friend, Mr. Chili Viking, because we've got some stupidity planned for the future for you as well. <laughs> but yeah. for now, me and my buddy here are gonna say ciao. So ciao for now, y'all. Yeah, I'll see you. Take care. <laughs>